Hello, welcome to the channel once again. I am Dr. Onyo Ube, the pharmacist by profession. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the exact role of the pharmacist in a hospital. Particularly, I'm referring to the doctor of pharmacy. So, a number of you have asked me the question that what actually do you do on the ward? And I'm going to answer that particular question right in this video. So keep on watching as I walk you through exactly what the pharmacist does on the ward. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to walk you through exactly what the pharmacist does on the ward. I've put this based on my own personal experience and what I do. I happen to be working in Tamale Teaching Hospital, the internal medicine department. So I'm just going to use my own experiences to tell you exactly what a pharmacist does on the ward. And I've captured these in four main ways. There are four main things or activities that I do on the ward. The first one is that on a regular basis, I join the clinical team that is a team comprising of the medical doctors, the nurses, and the pharmacists, as well as any other health professional that may be around at that point in time to go on rounds from patient to patient, discussing their case and also optimizing the therapy for that particular patient. So that is the first thing that I do on a regular basis. On my ward in particular, we usually have these ward rounds that we call the general ward rounds on Mondays and Thursdays. So every Monday and Thursday, I join the clinical team to go for these rounds. And the question that you may have is what exactly do I do or what is my role as part of this team? So as part of the team, when we are going rounds at any point in time, when there is a recommendation about a medication to be given to a patient, the pharmacist, as a pharmacist, they look up to you to make sure that they are choosing the right medication. And if there is any other information that they need to learn or know about the medication in terms of using it in that particular patient's case, you, the pharmacist, are responsible for that. So for instance, if... I happen to be on the ward where we have a lot of liver impairment cases. So if the team decides that they are going to use a medicine to treat any condition in a liver impaired patient, they expect you, the pharmacist, to tell them, is this medication safe in liver impairment or should we reduce the dose? What do we actually do concerning the dose of this medication in such a patient? So that is my role in that instance. Anytime I'm going on world rounds, I'm looking at the effects or side effects of the drugs, the potential side effects that the drugs may have on the individual so that I advise the team accordingly and even sometimes how to even take the medications because it's not everything that the medics or the nurses are aware of. So they look up to you as the custodian of drugs to give them the right information anytime they need it. So that's the first thing or the first role that I play in the hospital as a clinical pharmacist. The second role that I play on the ward is what I refer to as medication reconciliation. And what I mean by medication reconciliation is the fact that every single day when i'm on the ward i'm supposed to go and have a look at each patient's medications that they are on then make sure that they are receiving the right medications that they are supposed to receive in the right quantities at the right time and they are not having any problems or any issues taking that medicine okay so for an example of medication reconciliation is where I come and the drug has been prescribed for a patient. So I want to know, when we prescribe a drug for you, have you taken it? Did you take it? And after taking it, did you feel any side effects? So as a pharmacist, I'm aware of the potential side effects of almost all the medicines that my patients are receiving. Hence, I go and I ask the patients, have you observed any of these effects or is anything bothering you concerning the taking of your medicines? Is it, was the medicine given on time? So we have what we refer to as a treatment sheet where the nurses who are usually the ones administering the medications to inpatients or patients on the ward, they document anytime they give any particular medication. So 
as a pharmacist, uh, when I go for my medication reconciliation duty, I pick these treatment sheets and I compare to the medication. So for instance, if yesterday we prescribed a drug and it was dispensed, let's say there were 10 tablets of that particular drug dispensed to the patient, and it has been documented that the patient has received that medication, my role there is to inquire from the patient if he or she really got the medicine and also check by the bedside. So yesterday you were given 10 tablets and the chart here is showing me that you've received only two tablets. So let me check how many have you actually received from, from the number that has been removed from the quantity that is left there. I will be able to tell whether it corresponds to what has been charted in the treatment sheet. And at any point in time, when it does not co correspond, I have to find out why. Is it that the patient was taking an overdose? Or is it that the nurses didn't administer it, but they ended up charting? So I happen to do all those kind of investigative activities just to make sure that the medications that we are prescribing to the patient is actually receiving it so that we will make informed decisions about what to do next. For instance, if we keep giving a medicine and we don't follow up in terms of doing medication reconciliation and the patient is not getting well, how do you know that the medicine you are giving is working or not working? So I am supposed to be responsible for that to ensure that my patient is receiving the medicines just as it was prescribed. So that another point in time, if we want to change it because it's not working, then I'm sure that there is a medicine that is not working and not because my patient was not taking it. So to help me do that, I, another thing that I concern myself with as a pharmacist is what we refer to as the vital signs of the patients, like the temperature, the blood pressure, the heart rate, and all those other important signs in a sick person. So that at any point in time, when we are giving the medication, we have certain goals that we want to achieve. So I want to follow up and see that, all right, this medication was given for this particular reason. For instance, let's say the patient comes with a high temperature, a high body temperature, and we are giving an agent or a medication to alleviate the temperature. As I go on for my medication reconciliation duty, I am going to also check the vital signs of the patient. So has the patient's temperature improved? The question, there are some questions that I'm going to ask to help me ascertain that. For instance, I can ask how many times has the patient already received that particular medication? And for how long do I expect the patient to receive this particular medication before there is a change in the body temperature? So if that time has elapsed and my patient is not getting well, then I know that maybe my drug is not working or there may be an issue somewhere, so I have to follow up. So that is the second duty that I play as a clinical pharmacist on the ward. The next duty that I play on the ward is what I call counseling. So I do a lot of counseling as a clinical pharmacist on the ward. I have to counsel not only the patient, but sometimes the patient relatives as well. And other times too, I have to also counsel the other healthcare professionals about particular things, especially about the medications. As a pharmacist, my role is more about my, the medications and the patients. So I'm looking at how my medicines is affecting my patient and how my patient is also tolerating the medicines that they are being given. So I have to advise or counsel my patients accordingly. There are some medications that you need to, for instance, take it on empty stomach. And if there is anything like that, I need to let my patients be aware. If it is the nurses who are administering such medications to the patients, I also need to let the nurses be aware so that they will give that appropriately. There are some medications that are supposed to be kept in the fridge. I have to be there to inform the nurses that these medicines are to be kept in the fridge. Bring it out when we need to give it. Do this and do that and do that. So that is one particular role that every almost every pharmacist play, counseling. There is another important aspect that we refer to as discharge counseling. And this is where the patient who has been on the ward and is ready to be discharged, you have to come and counsel them. You know, when they are on the ward, usually we have a team of health workers around to help with all the administration of the drugs and all the other things related to optimizing the care of the patient. But now that the patient is being discharged and going home, 
do you have to also tell or inform your patients about a number of things so we have what we call non-drug related counseling i have to tell them when you go home you're supposed to do this or not don't do this avoid this i have to educate my patient tolerate about the medicines and every other thing that they can do or cannot do another important person that i'm supposed to be counseling as part of my duty is a patient relative so most of these patients come with care takers or uh, spouses or children at times okay so these caretakers also need to be well informed so that they will also contribute to the well-being of the patient so counseling is a very important aspect of the work of every pharmacist almost everywhere you find yourself as a pharmacist you are going to be involved in counseling patients and other people as well so that is the third role that i play on the world as a clinical pharmacist the last role that I play on the ward as a clinical pharmacist is medication administration. What do I mean by that? So when we have prescribed the medicine and it has been dispensed to the patient, that is the patient has, uh, the patient has gotten the medicine they are supposed to get. Now administration is for, left for the patient to take the medicine by whichever route of administration that we recommended. So as you may know by now, it's not every medicine that we take by mouth or we drink, if I should say, or swallow. It's not every medicine that we swallow. So, for instance, I have to be there to inform whoever is giving the medicine or oversee that my patient is getting the medicine through the right route of administration. So, for instance, if the drug is supposed to be given as an injection, I also need to inform the people who are giving it how slow that injection should be or how fast that injection should be okay so sometimes these are pretty pretty things that the other healthcare professionals are not so much aware of or they don't have so much knowledge in by you the pharmacist known as a custodian of medications you are expected to know all of these so that you inform them any point in time when it needs to be done so the administration is a very important one one we focus on the route of administration, the frequency, and even sometimes storage of the medication. You have to advise them, how is this medicine supposed to be stored? Okay, and for how long? We have something that we call reconstitution of the medicine, some medicines. So some of the medicines do not come in their readily available or ready to use form. You have to re prepare them before you use them. For instance, we can have powders that are meant for injection. Obviously, you can't put a powder in a strange and inject somebody. Imagine injecting yourself with a powder. It's not possible. So we have to reconstitute that powder. And by reconstitution, we mean adding some diluent or some fluid or some liquid, however you want to call it. If it is water, sometimes we use water for injection. So you pour it into your sample. How to the volume that you are even going to add. The one sometimes you, the pharmacist, have to come and tell us. How much do we add to this particular quantity of powder and how do we give it? If you say by injection, what do you mean by injection? Do I give it by subcutaneous injection? That is, should the person inject it under their skin or should it go directly into their veins? Okay, so all those technicalities, they expect to the pharmacist to be uh, aware of them so that at any point in time, especially when the nurses are not so much a conversant with the particular drug and its administration then they will call on you to help them out so basically these are the four main roles that i play as a pharmacist on the ward let me just recap them quickly so that you would be reminded of my roles as a clinical pharmacist on the ward one i said i joined the general uh, clinical team on ward rounds so we go on rounds and sometimes they ask you a lot of questions so if you are preparing to become a pharmacist know that that is one thing you are going to be doing a lot going to answer questions people are going to be calling on you every now and then for questions concerning medicines that's the first one then secondly i talked about medication reconciliation so that is also a very important rule. If you want to be on the ward as a clinical pharmacist, you have to always make sure your patient is receiving the right medicine in the right amount at the right time and everything that is correct about that particular medicine for your patient in order to get the patient 
app and going as soon as possible. The next thing that I talked about is my role as a counselor. So I counsel my patients and their relatives as well as other healthcare providers that may be around and when need be, I counsel them as well. And finally, I talked about my role in medication administration. Usually it's not the pharmacist who administer the medicines. Mostly it is the nurses who do that, but there are a lot of concerns about administration. There are a lot of information and they expect the pharmacist to be aware of these ones so that at any point in time, they can walk to you and ask you. So you have to be on, the, on top of your game when it comes to medication administration so that you can answer all their questions concerning that. In another video, I'll talk to you more about all the other activities that I play a part of or as a clinical pharmacist, you are going to play a part of outside the world work so that you get a whole view of what we do as pharmacists in the hospital. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, just comment them down below and I'll surely reply to them. Thank you for sticking around. If you have not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Kindly subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.